Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about periodic law. So periodic law is the scientific law that has governed the formation of our periodic table of elements. So unless you've been living under a rock for your entire life, you're probably at least somewhat familiar with the periodic table of elements. Uh, but what you probably haven't uh, asked yourself is, you know, why the periodic table? Why does the periodic table look like the way it does? Uh, I mean, it certainly doesn't look like any other table that I've ever seen. In most tables, you have rows and columns and all the rows have the same length and all the columns have the same height but the periodic table has this weird looking shape to it so why does the periodic why is the periodic table shaped the way it is well to answer this question let's go back to the first periodic table the first periodic table was created by a russian chemistry <clears throat> chemistry professor named dmitry mendeleev and in his time there were about 65 known elements and there was a lot of information that was known about these elements, you know, the masses of the elements, uh, their various um, physical properties, various chemical properties, and so on and so forth. So what Dmitry Mendeleev did was he took all of this available information and he listed the elements in order of increasing mass. And in doing so, he found that certain properties reappeared periodically. In other words, they showed a pattern. So if we take uh, if if we take the first uh, 20 elements of the periodic table and uh, do sort of the same thing that uh, Mendeleev did, well these are the first 20 elements: hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. These are the first 20 elements, and the elements that uh, are shown in the same color have the same uh, chemical properties. So in other words, hydrogen, fluorine, and chlorine have similar chemical properties. Helium, neon, and argon have similar chemical properties as well. So notice that by listing these elements in order, from, uh, increasing, in order of increasing mass, notice that we have this pattern here. We have this red, yellow, green, blue, and then we have a gap of four elements, and then we have another red, yellow, green, blue, and then another gap of four elements, and then another red, yellow, green, blue. So it's like something crazy is going on here. We have this pattern, and basically what Dmitry Mendeleev did was he constructed a table where the atomic mass of the elements increased from left to right, and also he put uh, elements with the same chemical properties in the same vertical columns. So if you were to do that here with the first 20 elements, uh, it would look something like this. So again, the atomic mass is increasing from left to right, and elements that have the same properties are shown in the same vertical columns. So uh, this is pretty interesting stuff because what Mendeleev did was he didn't know about all of these elements listed here. So in, in Mendeleev's periodic table, there were some gaps. and uh, using these gaps, uh, Mendeleev was actually able to predict the existence of elements that had yet to be discovered. So, I mean, to me, that's pretty wild. I mean, just by arranging what you already know in a certain way, you can make very accurate predictions as to what about things that haven't even been discovered yet. So, to me, that's, that's pretty amazing stuff. So, this is what uh, Mendeleev did. And uh, how does Mendeleev's table differ from the periodic table today? Well, for one, we have much more elements. Uh, today we have about, I think, 118 uh, known elements in our periodic table. So that's almost three times as much as what Mendeleev was dealing with in his time. And also, instead of arranging the elements in order of mass, we arrange them in order of increasing atomic number. And it's much simpler this way because mass isn't necessarily unique to an element. I mean, you, some elements have many, many different isotopes and, you know, it, it just sort of complicates things. So in, instead, we, we use atomic number, which is unique uh, to the element by our current definition. So uh, there's one last thing I'd like to talk about with periodic law here, and it's that, you know, periodic law is just that. It's a law. It's not a scientific theory. So remember, scientific laws are just brief summaries of the observations that people have come up with and they predict future observations. They don't actually try to explain any of the underlying reasoning for why the elements behave the way they do. Uh, the theory associated with that is called the quantum mechanical model of the atom, which I will go over in a future video. But uh, just keep that in mind. These are just observations and um, that's pretty much it. So 
Uh, I hope you've learned a little bit from this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the whole periodic table, all the ins and outs of it, and it's going to be fun. So I will uh, see you guys soon. Bye-bye.